So as we get started today, this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point, just a look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today I have a cotton sun hat. So Yarnspirations contacted me a few weeks ago and they said, can you think about doing some summer hats or anything like that? And I wrote back saying, oh sure, no problem. Meanwhile, I'm totally freaking out because I've not designed hats in my career really. So I did it way back in the beginning. Hats are really quite hard for me. So that's something that I kind of avoided. So I decided to play with the idea and I just played with different stitches and etc. So in this particular one, you'll see the bean stitch coming to be. So how that happened is somebody emailed me the morning of designing this, asked me about the stitch and then and it was kind of in my head. So as I was working through it, we have this. So I thought, okay, what kind of yarn are you gonna wanna use for the summer? So I did this uh, summer hat a few years ago, many years ago actually, and I used acrylic yarn. Oh my God, that was so hot. So this brand new yarn just came out from Bernat and this is called Softy Cotton and it is a cotton, 60% of cotton and 40% uh, acrylic. This is a number three yarn and this feels like a dream. This cotton here is not your dish rag cotton. This is fashion cotton as you can see that the model is wearing. And for durability I decided to double strand. So this particular hat that you have here is that you are going to use only one ball of the main color. So this is refresh. So this is what it looks like when it's folded down. Beautiful. And it's only using one ball of this and I'm gonna tell you a little secret about that and then we're just going to be using this uh, other ball here and the other ball is called cotton. The color is called cotton and then you have enough in order to do the brim here to do the fold that will keep it up. Now here's the thing. It is double stranded. So I double stranded just to keep the, the durability of this hat going and I only said it needs one ball. So how can you do one ball out of two, uh, like two strands out of one ball? So you'll grab the internal strand here and then you'll put, you'll grab the external one here. So you have two strands. So the inside of the ball and the outside, slam this into like a salad bowl and then just leave it on the floor. And as you're pulling on it, you will notice that it will pull from the interior and the exterior. I never had much of a problem with that. So since releasing this pattern, um, we came up with uh, all the pattern details. We did the testing and my particular um, uh, team did all the testing for that. Now here's the thing about this is that because of the popularity of it and so many questions, I decided to just follow up last week and I put all the crochet diagrams. So I'm not very good at doing the crochet diagrams in a circle. So this represents a circle but it's just showing you enough for the repeating. And so all the um, questions came in about round number four, round number seven and round number 11. So that's kind of what prompted that. And so you will find that each one of the rows are there so that you can follow that along if you wish and that's something that's kind of neat. So we have three pages of that. So we're going to be using today just on camera, I'm just gonna use Karen uh, Cotton Cakes. The reason for it is that this yarn, I don't have a lot of it and I'm treating it like it's gold because I love it so much. So I'm just gonna be demonstrating with that. Just keep in mind that there is a gauge. The gauge is important. This is why I don't do hats for designing is that if you don't honor the gauge, then what happens with this particular concept is that the hat will be too big or too small. You will notice with the Karen Cotton Cakes is that my friend actually did it with Karen Cotton Cakes just with the one strand. So that's something that you can decide for yourself or you can skip the drama and just double strand using Bernat Softy Cotton. So using a four, a four millimeter size, uh, what is that? A four millimeter size um, G hook. We're gonna be playing with that today and we're now going to get started. So without further ado, that's enough chitter chatter. Let's get at her. So let's begin. If you're double stranding with the other yarn, just make sure there's two strands so that you're using it at one time. So if you were double stranding, I just plug a different yarn that you can't see. So you'll put them together. Pretend that they're just one so that when you're playing with it, then they double strand. I would not be double stranding with Karen uh, Cotton Cakes though. It will be too big. So just notice that the thickness of this yarn compared to the other yarn that we have here, the Softy Cotton, there is quite a difference to how it performs. So this is more dense and this is more softer and a lot more thinner. So I'm um, double stranding the two of these versus this is very different. So let's begin now. So let's begin with the slip knot and we're going to use your four millimeter size G crochet hook and you're going to chain two. So one and two and that's the beginning. Let's move on to round number one. In round number one, we are going to go to second chain from the hook. So it's the first chain that you created and you are going to just go into that and you're going to single crochet a total of five times. So we have one, 
two, three, four, and five. And you're gonna notice it feels dense because there's not a lot of stitch work in there. Just go with it because you want it to be nice and like that on the top. So counting back to the fifth one to find the first one if you don't see it already. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and that's the one that you're going to do the slip stitch with and that will conclude then round number one. Let's move on to round number two. So each one of these uh, rounds have a repeat. So I'm going to cover the repeats when it's available to me and that's most of them. So let's begin. Round number two. Chain up one and then in each one of the stitches you're going to apply two single crochets into it. So you'll just do that. So the way that I do it off camera if you weren't watching me I would just say, I just put two into the one. So I will say that's one and I just wanna make sure that I'm starting off right. So the next one is two and two. So there's two in number two and then I go three and three and then four and four and then five and five. And that will tell me that I've now just finished all the way around. So this one here that looks like it's extra, it's not. It's part of the very first one. So that's where people start adding stitches. So that's why I do that just on this count just to make sure that I understand that. And once you're confirmed just slip stitch to the top of the beginning. Single crochet and close that in. Let's begin round number three. So we're now gonna start doing the repeating idea. So I'll tell you what the instruction is and you'll do it. Well hopefully. So you're gonna chain up one and then in the first one you're going to apply two single crochets. So one and two is in the first one and then the next one is uh, two and two into the second one and etc. and you'll do that all the way around and you should have a total of 20 single crochets when you get around and make sure you slip stitch to the top of the beginning single crochet to complete. Please do round number three. Now round number three is complete. So now we're gonna move on to round number four which is where all the first set of questions are. So we're going to just chain three and that counts as the first double crochet that it's coming out of. So the very next one here right where I'm pinching is actually the next stitch coming out. So that's gonna be double crochet into the next stitch. And we're doing an increase and what I thought for this particular hat to keep it kind of like um, like woven look is that you're going to single crochet around this last post. So just going into the post and pulling it through and then finish it. That's a single crochet around that post. So that gives you the three stitches that you would need in order to do the expansion. So the repeat on this is that the next one and the one after that is a, is a double crochet and then the second one here is going to be you're gonna put a single crochet around the post. And so that gives you your, your three that you need. Your Okay, and it's creating this extra space. So I'll show you one more time. So you'll do the next two in a row of double crochet and then single crochet around that post. And I want you to do that all the way around for round number four. So I'm finishing up round number four. I'm just keeping the sequence. So I've just did my single crochet around the post here. So I have two more double crochets left. And then I have to go around that last post single crochet and then attach it to the beginning chain three. And so that will conclude that. So let's now move on to round number five. So let's begin number five. You're going to chain up one and you're going to single crochet into the first. What I need to caution you about because of this is just number two is that this single crochet in this post here can look like it's one stitch but it's actually two. So don't forget that happens. So chaining two so I'm skipping the first one which is here and then this is the next one right after it. So you'll single crochet there. So the repeat pattern to go all the way around is that there will be one single crochet in the next, chain two, skip just one and single crochet in the next. So the repeat then again is single crochet the next, chain two, skip one and single crochet the next. So I want you to go all the way around and you should have 20 single crochets and 10 chain two spaces and I'll see you at the end of number five. So I'm following the pattern as I know it in the sequence and I'm skipping one and I'm single crocheting into the one after the one. So with the first one with the single crochet and this one here that is like your two that are it together. You see that? It's the other side by side. So just make sure that you're taking a mental note of that. Okay, so that's it and let's move on to round number six. 
In round number six we have to get ourselves to this chain two space. So you're just gonna slip stitch over to the space first and then this is where your story is going to begin. You're going to chain three which will count as a double crochet and then you'll put four more double crochets into that same space. So that's one, two, three and four. So with the chain three plus those four that gives you the number of five. So just jump to the next chain two space and put in five double crochets and you're gonna do that all the way around. So five double crochet in each chain two space around. Join it to the top of the beginning chain three and that's where I'll see you next for round number seven. So coming up all the way around you'll just chain So now let's begin round number seven. So you're going to chain one at this point and you are going to just um, uh, chain one. Let's begin round number seven. Chain one and you're going to single crochet between the space here. So just see how they are in groups of five. Just go right into the space and single crochet. You're then going to chain two, one and two and then go to the middle one of the grouping of five and single crochet. Chain two and go into the space between the two groups and single crochet. So the repeat pattern is chain two, go to the middle one of the grouping of five, single crochet, chain two and then go into the space. Please do that all the way around. This is round number seven. Coming out to the end of number seven, just chain two and slip stitch to the beginning, single crochet to finish. Let's move on to round number eight next. In round number eight we have to get ourselves to the next chain two space. So slip stitch over to the space first and then I need you to chain three. So one, two and three. And in the same space I want you to put two more double crochet. So it's instead of doing five like we were before it's only three double crochets. So come to the next space and put in three double crochet and you'll do that with every space going all the way around. This is round number eight. So now moving on to number nine. So we got ourselves slip stitch to the top of the chain three and it's looking more dense. You'll notice that it's also turning down. That's because we have a multiple of only uh, we started off with five and then it went to ten and then it went to twenty. So because it's uh, like that and not twelve or twenty four it tends to bowl down which is what we're looking for in this hat. So let's begin number nine. So you're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in the space between the groups of three. So right into the space and then you're going to chain one and then come to the middle wing, middle one of the grouping of three and single crochet. And then chain one and then come into the space between the three, uh, the groups of three. And then chain one and go to the middle and chain one and go between the groups. Please do that all the way around, round number nine. So I'm coming up to the number nine so I'm just following the pattern and make sure I chain one and slip stitch to the beginning single crochet and we're now going to move on to round number ten where there's a special note. Let's look at that next. So let's look at number ten. The note says treat each chain one space and single crochet as individual stitches because we have to do a reduction we have to get ourselves to the to the number of 70. So even if you're not sure just make sure that you get 70 stitches all the way around but I will show you the way that it's written because that's what we've done. So you're going to just chain up one and you'll single crochet in the beginning stitch. So, so the very beginning one is that we're going to single crochet in the next six. So the chain one space is considered a stitch. So there's one and then this is right into a stitch. This is two and space is three. Next one is a stitch is four. And the next one is a space which is five and then the one in the stitch is six. So what you're going to do then is that once you have that done you're gonna skip the next one which will be a chain one space and yet start again then in the next stitch after that space. So sometimes you're gonna be jumping over a space, sometimes it's over stitch. Just treat every stitch and space as one single, as a, as a stitch itself. So skipping that stitch which is the chain one, you're gonna do the next seven. So one and two, three, four, five, six and seven. 
So now we're gonna skip the next one which happens to be a space. So you go into the one after that and start again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I'm just realizing that you're skipping a space each time not, a, not just a single crochet. So skipping that space and then go to the next and start again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then skip the next one, one and do that. So that's what you're gonna do all the way around. This is round number 10. When you come around to number 10, don't forget that you're keeping the sequence and that you are skipping over the last space in order to keep it. So what I highly recommend to you which I will do off camera in a second is just make sure there's only 70 stitches all the way around. It's Okay so I have verified there is 70 there. No camera tricks. It just worked out which is awesome because it should. <laughs> Doesn't mean it is though. So. so we're going to start off with round number 11 and you're gonna chain three which will count as a double crochet and in the same space as the join you'll double crochet again. So okay so there's two double crochets technically out of that one stitch. So skipping the only one stitch you're going to put two double crochet into the next and then skipping the next stitch and then two double crochet into the next and you'll do that all the way around. So this is round number 11. I'll see you back here in a moment. I'm coming to the end of number 11 so I'm just going to join it to the top of the first chain three. So I'm gonna take a quick pause here because I wanna show you something here on the pattern. Something that was a design consideration but I also think it's helpful for you to know as well. So technically where we are in this pattern is that we've just done the first grouping of the two double crochets right here. The next stitch that we're gonna have round number 12 is a bean stitch and then you're gonna go back to doing these two double crochets side by side. But when you look at the hat you don't realize that there's actually two different stitches going on. So the bean stitch provides that lift. This is a relief and then the bean stitch again. So you're going to be doing this set of instructions a total of three times. So you'll do 12 and 13, 12 and 13 and 12 and 13 and I'm only gonna show you 12 and 13 one time and then you'll have to do the other two times on your own. So let's move on to round number 12. So in round number 12 we wanna play within the spacing. So even if you're repeating this in the future you're always gonna play between the two uh, double crochets that you see. So see we'll play right there or right there and etc. When you start this round though you have to chain one and you're going to have to single crochet or sorry you're gonna have to chain one and your bean stitch will be in the spacing just before the join. And to do the bean stitch what you have to do is that you just have to go in. So watch I'll show this several times. You go right into the stitch itself. In this case it will be the space and pull through and then you're gonna yarn over and then going into the space and then pull through and then you're gonna yarn over going into the space and pull through. And you have all of this on here. To do this properly you're going to yarn over and only pull through the first group of there. Leave this one here. Don't go through that. So you pull through that section but don't pull through the final and then pull through the two to lock it and then chain one to move on to the next one. So you're gonna come into the next space here between the groups. So just going right in first and grabbing it. And this is so much easier than puff stitching. Puff stitching if you wrap it first and then going in it always snags for me. So this is the bean stitch. So wrap in in, pull through and wrap in in, pull through. Pull through the first wad here leaving that last one and then pull through the final two and chain one to move on. So here we go again. So in, pull through, yarn over and in, pull through, yarn over and in, pull through, pull through everything but the final and then pull through the final two to lock and chain one to move on. I want you to do this all the way around. This is round number 12. So I'm coming up to the end of number 12. So I've already done my bean stitch. I locked it and it's a chain one and I'm going to slip stitch it to the top of the first bean stitch that I was in before. So there you go. So let's move on to round number 13 next. Moving on to round number 13 we're going to slip stitch ourselves to the first chain one space which is right after the bean stitch. So slip on over and now you're ready to go. 
you're going to chain three. There's your first du double crochet and in the same space and do you see how this strand is reaching over? Just be consistent so that you're always going into the same spot. So you'll put a double crochet there. So there's two into that. So when you go to separate it, do you see how we went in just before this line came down? Just be consistent so that it looks consistent all the way around. The bean stitch causes that. So you're just putting in two double crochets into each one of the chain one spaces in between the bean stitches and this will be round number 13. I'll see you at the end of this round. We'll recap and you need to do rounds number 12 and 13 two more times. So coming up to the end of round number 13, don't forget to come into the space that is before here. So every, there should be two double crochets that are grouped together between each um, bean stitch from below. So what I want to do then is just slip stitch it to the first one here and then I wanna begin again. So you're gonna do rounds number 12 and 13 two more times. So you'll do 12 and 13, 12 and 13 and then you meet me back here where I'll pick you up on round number 18. So what you need to do to get started again if you don't remember is that you're gonna chain one and put a bean stitch into the same space that you're in. So just going in and then just do the bean stitch as you know it and then chain one and then continue to again right into the each space going all the way around. So please do rounds number 12 and 13 a total of two more times so that you end up with uh, starting with round number 18 next time I see you. So please do this and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So at this point in the tutorial it's going to resemble a beanie look and so you will have uh, done rounds number, or sorry rounds number 12 and 13 a total of three times all together. So now we're ready for number 18. So this will be the last time we're using the same color unless you don't wanna change colors of course. So round number 18 is just you're gonna chain up one and there should be one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around and then join it to the first single crochet and you're going to break that yarn and we're going to start with a fresh yarn after that. So if you'd like to do that that's up to you. If you'd like to keep the same yarn that's on you as well. So please do that and I would verify also that you still have 70 single crochets. Um, you shouldn't have to do anything that will question that but if you wanna double check you can and just make it or fake it right. Make sure there is 70. I'll be back in just a moment. I'm now at the end of 18 so I've already slip stitched to the beginning and what I want to do is just change out my color at this point. You can weave all your ends in at the end and you're ready to go then for round number 19. I'm just gonna leave that end on the inside. So let's begin number 19 and the way that we're going to do that is that it's gonna cause the brim to start uh, coming out of the hat itself so that it can sit flat but in order to do that we have to make sure that we attach to the front loops only. To begin I'm just gonna grab another yarn that I have here. This is Karen Cotton Cakes as well and I'm just going to create a slip knot to begin and I want to use only the front loop so if you're new to crochet and I would probably just come just a few stitches before you did the join because I'm gonna show you something and just go into the front loop only. Okay so I'm looking at the outside of the hat front loop only and that causes a natural bend to happen and so you're just gonna pull through and then you're gonna chain one and single crochet into the same one. Go right up over top of the straggler so that you can trap that in a position and so you're just gonna go all the way around and you're not adding any stitches so there will be 70 here and watch what happens when I come here. So this is where it's done the join. So people think that that's a stitch but it's not. It's just a join. So when you go over just make sure you jump over the join and go right immediately to the next one after that. And if you do that there instead of um, doing it right on the stitch itself. So usually people start and stop at the same spot but if you do that just a few stitches before you can hide that even better. So just continue on the front loop only of one single crochet all the way around for round number 19. So I'm coming up all the way around and I'm just gonna slip stitch to the first single crochet I started with and we're now going to begin round number 20 and we're no longer paying attention to um, the idea of doing front or back loops at this time but we will revisit that in the future. Let's move on to round number 20. In round number 20 we're gonna do a seriously uh, big increase here to really create that uh, the brim out. So here's the repeat pattern. So you're just gonna chain up one to start and now the next six using both of the loops which is a regular stitch is gonna be a single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five and six. 
Once you get that six, the next one is gonna be three single crochets. One, two, and three. Okay? So that's gonna be your repeat. So six in a row and then three into the next. Six in a row, three into the next. I'll see you at the end of this round, number 20. So I've now just come to the end of number 20. So round 21 is going to be the same as 18. So it's just one single crochet in each stitch. So just chain up one and do one single crochet in each. And this allows those increases to balance out a little bit better. And then I'll be back in a moment and we'll do number 22 next. So I've now just completed round number 21. In number 22 we're going to create the increase again but we're gonna change the increase so it's here. You see the easy increases it creates these points. So if you put an increase in between those it makes it more of a round circle. So that's the whole point. So you're going to start off and you're gonna chain one and then you'll put one single crochet in the first three stitches. So one, two, and three. Then you're gonna put in three single crochets into the next one. So one, two, and three. And here's the repeat pattern then for the remaining of the round. So you, what you're going to do is then you're gonna put one single crochet in the next eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And noticing that it went over top of that increased section there so that it has more balanced look. And now the next one is gonna have three single crochets in it. So I want you to keep repeating. So eight and then three single crochets in the next, eight and then three single crochets in the next. And once you get all the way back around at the end of this round, you're gonna have one single crochet in the last five stitches in order to have the balance. And that will then conclude that round. So I'll see you close to the end of round number 22 in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the end of round number 22 and there is a total of five stitches left which will all be single crochets and you're gonna join it to the very beginning and we're going to start rounds number 23 and 24 next. 23 and 24 is just straight single crochets around so there's no increase so chain up one and slam in a single crochet in each stitch and please do this around 23 and 24 meet me back here and then we're gonna start the brim work of the actual rolling of the brim after that. So please do rounds number 23, 24 now. I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm now coming to the end of number 24 and I'm just going to join it. So what we have to do for 25 is that we have to turn our work. So we're just gonna turn our work and work on the wrong side here as we do the next part here. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to create that roll that we see within the brim. So to start this round you're going to chain up one and you're gonna stay on the front loops only. So starting in the first one you're just gonna apply one single crochet in the front loop only. And this is going to create an extra loop that will be on the top side of the brim. And that loop will be used to have the fold so that when we're ready to fold over the brim for the permanent roll is that it's available to you. So you will see this extra loop that will be on the top. So please stay with the front loops and do one single crochet all the way around and I'll see you at the end of number 25 in just a moment. So I'm finishing up round number 25 and I'm just going to slip stitch it to the top. Stay on the wrong side again for the next two rounds, so 26 and 27 and use the regular stitches only and just continue to single crochet all the way around. And this is creating the underside. So when we do the fold, this is the good side. So this good side is gonna be what is showing to the public when they're uh, looking at you from a distance, of course. So um, continue it along and just do a single crochet in each and do rounds number 26 and 27 and then we'll be fi finishing off with round number 28 as the final to conclude today's project. Let's continue that in just a moment. So I've now just officially done number 27. So I finished all the way there. The next one is part of the, the roll. So what I have here is in the instructions I state that this refresh color which is the main body was very close to the edge end of the yarn ball. I only had a few feet left over. It's like yarn chicken big time. But that's how I ended up with that. So if, if you think that you're gonna be playing yarn chicken and it worries you then just use a different color. You can use the same color as the brim in order to create that as well. So that's something that you can decide and the same thing happened on both of the different kind of styles that I did. So I'm gonna change the color anyway just to verify that. And I'm gonna meet you back here in a moment. So I'm just gonna fasten this off and do my last flip of the roll in the final round.
So let's do the flip of the roll. You're gonna come very close to where you stopped. I might just go a few stitches earlier like I explained before and just coming in and you are just going to just chain or just attach it first. Chain one and then begin. So coming into that same one I want you to lay it down and once you get the first one just lay it down straight and just push it back and collect the next loop that you see in the brim. And once you get that this should all be equal to each other and then just yarning over pulling it in and you're single crocheting. And what this is doing is it's pushing this edge back to where this join is or to where that loop is. So just leave that down in front. So come to the next one. So in and then go into the next one that's available and single crochet. And that's leaving this color on top of the brim. So in and collect the next one that is available to you and etc. And you should come all the way around and have exactly the amount of stitches that you need to complete that. Okay, so that's how you're gonna complete the roll. And once you bury this uh, secondary yarn enough you can just uh, get rid of that, just leave it out and then you can just carry on and not worrying about that as well or you can sew it in later and leave it out completely. But either way you're gonna have to make sure it's hidden and tucked away. So once you get that started it's just a matter of going through both layers and this is creating that brim that you see. So let's uh, just come around and I'll see you back here in a moment and we'll conclude today's tutorial. So I'm coming all the way around and I've not joined the two ends. So I'm just gonna create a longer tail. I'm gonna show you a tip that I would do if I were you but of course it's always up to you. Pull that loop through so it's not joined yet and this is called an invisible join and what you wanna do is that you want to put this through a tapestry needle and how you join it is how they do Mandela work when it's really fine detail. So what you're going to do is that you're gonna take that tail and you're gonna go through the stitch as if you were going to crochet it. So coming from the other side back across just the top of the stitch like that. Then pull through and see where this is coming out of? Go back down through that loop and what this will do is that it will create a faux stitch so it looks like it's actually part of the work itself. Then turn it to the inside of the hat because people won't really see that there and you're going to drag this loop through the work. Stay within the gray section only, don't go through it and you just wanna take your time and just stay right there and go about an inch or so. And when you pull the first time you wanna have it so it's balanced pretty close to it and it saves you having a god awful knot at the end of your project especially on the brim. Even if you turn it around somebody's gonna be standing at line right? Turn the hat around so it's behind your head. Somebody's gonna be standing behind the line and say look at that knot or maybe that's just me. <laughs> it's probably just me who knows. So go back and forth a total of three times staying within that section and therefore it can be pretty much hidden like that. So when you're wearing it see it's pretty close to almost perfect.